I'm on a giant salt lake in the gold fields of Western Australia. It's one of the most inhospitable places in the world. With the blinding sun and the fierce glare, it's easy to become disorientated. And if you were to get lost out here, then water is the key to your survival. So how will the team from an inner city cocktail bar who pride themselves on perfection, cope in an environment in which they have no control and no choice but to do or die. Is your boss a teacher or a tyrant? Six funky inner city cocktail bar workers are about to discover the difference in a gruelling test of Outback survival. Some of us might die, but that's all right, we can always rehire. Piling on the pressure is top corporate psychologist, Dr. Travis Kemp, who believes in the power of experiential learning. I've got a really strong belief that people can absolutely change. What you two are doing now ain't helping anyone. These experiences are a lot about people's behaviour. Don't just do it, use your head. Their thinking. I've got women's intuition. And the emotions that they feel when they're out in these wilderness environments. Oh, oh shit, buddy, shit. What is it? Did he? Did he? I can tell you, people are not being honest with each other and they're not stepping up and saying what they need to say. When they've got those three things working for them, they're absolutely going to be successful in that change. But can Dr Kemp solve the problems of a whole workplace? To find out, he's about to turn just another day at the office into a battle for survival. We're going to die, guys. We're going to die. Cross, the heart of Sydney's nightclub scene and home to Goldfish, a successful cocktail bar proud of its attention to detail and classy clientele. Meet one of the partners and self-proclaimed perfectionist, Ben. I'm one of those people who can't sit in a room with a crooked picture. Same gap to that as there. No, I'm always walking around straightening things up. Should be about an inch, that gap. Sometimes I think you can teach people attention to detail and some people just don't get it. This advertising's just gone up so we have to check that. I tell it how it is, but at the same time I think I'm pretty accommodating. I'd hope, I'd hope I am anyway. Where Ben is fundamentally a small picture kind of guy, the responsibility for the big picture rests with his old mate and business partner, Dan. We're one of the uh, major players in King's Cross now, which is its excellence, consistency in, in everything that we do from open to close, to when we come in, to when we leave. People need to know what they're going to get this time, next time, and in three months, staff need to know when they walk in, what exactly they're meant to do, when they do do it, and when they're to do it by, and how they do it. And we work well in terms of complementing each other. Uh, one is a good cop, one's a bad cop. The third corner of the managerial triangle is general manager Julian. I always tell the staff, yeah, I'm not perfect, nobody's perfect, so we strive for perfection and have some perfect moments. You wouldn't have one over here and one over here. Put them to the right, put them to the right, ready for a photo shoot. I think the staff really do appreciate attention to detail and it, and it weeds out the wheat from the chaff. So what's it like trying to live up to those exacting standards? Meet Dan, the bar supervisor and trainee manager. You've got some of the guys here are total authoritarians and their word is law and that is the way it's going to be. Cheers mate. Literally there's two sides, there's, there's those that lead and those that follow and I am sort of in the middle there somewhere. If anything goes wrong then I'm, I, I cop it on both ends. So um, yeah, if there's, if there's ever a problem it's usually the supervisor's fault, you know. <laughs> Events coordinator Laura is no stranger to pressures and deadlines. If deadlines aren't met then they'd get a bit angry about it but it's up to them to approve our work before we can get it out there. If uh, people organise meetings, a lot of the time they don't show up. You know, you could have a big emergency on your hands and they'd have their phone switched off. So it's not a tightly run ship as such. And last but not least, new kid on the block, Anai, has been with Goldfish just four months. She's still getting a handle on this attention to detail thing. The constant criticism by everybody else. Yeah, you're doing a good job, but napkins, straws, that doesn't go there, and it's, yeah, just constant nagging. Goldfish, a strong corporate culture 
and a leadership team with a tight grip on power and fixed ideas on how things are meant to be. But in a highly competitive environment with plans to expand into a whole lot of extra venues, is their corporate culture a recipe for success or a fast track to failure? This sounds like a case for Bushman and corporate shrink, Dr. Travis Kemp. So there's a couple of key dynamics within Goldfish that probably need some, some work. Obviously the relationship between Ben and Dan Rice is very close. They're two partners in the organisation. It's clear that they've got a couple of big challenges. They need to become much more accessible, much more open, and start to really loosen up their grip and their control over the organisation. Oh, it's going to be very difficult for them to continue to grow the business and be successful. The Goldfish City Slickers think they're heading off for a bit of corporate bonding in the bush. They will be pushed to their limits in a dangerous survival scenario in the remote and unforgiving desert country of the Western Australian goldfields. It's easy to get lost out here in a harsh, dry and merciless environment of red earth and mammoth salt lakes. If we can learn something extra that's going to help us as individuals and as a team, I think that's what I want to, I want to achieve out of this adventure. I think that there are things that, that need to be changed in the way that people um, speak to people and treat people concerning certain members of the management team. They don't know where they're going or what challenges they face, but one thing is for sure, it's do <laughs> or die. Well, introductions. My name's Dr. Travis Kemp. I can guarantee you right now it's going to be a tough week the next five days. You're going to be put under an enormous amount of stress and it's going to call upon you, I guess, to uh, behave and interact with each other in a whole new way. The outcome of what we're about to do is still unknown to me and everybody because stuff happens out here. So you're up for it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Fantastic. So first things first, uh, probably need to get some more appropriate clothes on. Let's get ourselves changed and then we'll come back together and we'll get on with it, okay? All right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Next, Travis will present their first challenge, one that could make all the difference in their struggle to survive. So what we have in front of us is everything that you could possibly need to stay safe and to support you on your adventure over the next five days. The decisions that you make about what you take with you are critical. You can only take with you what you can carry, nothing else. <laughs> so, 15 minutes you have to make decisions about what you're going to take to pack it up, ready to go. So yeah. you have 48 hours worth of food. Once yeah. you've taken what you want to take out of your clothes, yeah. then that disappears That's for five it. days. <laughs> right. All, right. All right, 15 minutes starts now, go for it. Let's do it. All right. Goldfish's gospel is attention to detail. Combine that with two bosses used to getting their own way, and you'd expect this all to run pretty smoothly. But three minutes have already elapsed and they're still rummaging in their own suitcases and ignoring what's on the tarp. The priority is food, water, shelter, and the tools they'll need to operate effectively in this rugged terrain. Toilet. Do we need toilet. A we don't need a toilet. I don't no, need one, so. <laughs> <laughs> the girls, I don't know about the girls. So you've got five more minutes, guys. Five more minutes. And remember that you've got to carry everything yourself. Okay. The time is running out, and Travis is getting worried. They're all over the place at the moment, really, seriously. They're all over the place. Making decisions left, right and centre. No one's talking to each other. They're going to run out of time. They're going to leave things behind. I hope they make the best decisions they can because they're not looking good at this point. Right, this is where we need to work as a team. Having failed to be more decisive about what they need and here. don't need, okay, so we'll they opt to take as much as possible. Just in case we go scuba diving. Three minutes left, get what you want off the tarp and clearly put it in a pile. Whether it's useful, definitely bring right. or useless, I don't think I've ever gone camping before. They're now obliged to lug it around with them until the end of the week. So, who didn't get the snorkel? Alright, let's keep okay. going. Pack right. your gear up. So what they've ended up doing is taking almost everything on the tarp and not really thinking about the fact that they're going to be carrying these things for the next five days. They've got a whole bunch of stuff that they don't need and they're going to make that realisation over the next 24 hours. It's good at not. Let's head off 
into a, a more sheltered area. There's a nice little gully just at the end of the salt pan here. I would encourage you to sort of look for a, a spot in there where you can sort of set yourself up for the night. It's late afternoon. The light is fading, and the priority now is to set up camp for the night. I'm following Ben. He looks like he knows what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, looks like it. Boss Ben strides out in front, keen to make an early statement on leadership. What's the, what, what's the deal? We Trying to figure out if we want to stay here for this or if we want to go and find a place that's got a bit more top shelter if in case it rains. Mate, that's flat, it's sheltered. I think we'll get a fire started anyway. Yeah, so look, look through here. We're going jogging. Yeah, just I reckon there. When Ben's right, Ben's right. <laughs> I kind of want to see where Ben's Jill's wrong. Going. Jill seems to know. You're where wrong, and Ben's right. <laughs> and you look over yeah, there now. Yeah, this is nice. It's like this, a little, little smaller. And you prefer this place? Yeah, I think over there would be good. Two junior rain, members of the team, Laura and Dan the Barman, have some camping and scouting experience. They're going to check out another site. Um, ben, ben likes this one, but Jules reckons there's more practical one over there. I'd probably trust Jules' word uh, <laughs> against Ben, but I kind of want to check it out before I... I looked at, I looked at I this and I thought it was pretty... It's fine. There's plenty of trees around for shelter. There's heaps of wood for fire. It's flat. They're a valuable resource to draw on for the benefit of the whole group. Right, what do we think of the place over there? But boss Ben only seems to be interested in the opinions of his equals. All right, we'll live and die. So what do you reckon, Dan? This one yeah. over there, just behind those trees. Yeah. 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 I'm not very far into it. We worry about problems with people uh, doing their own thing in their own way. It's going to be very interesting for the next couple of days. Yeah. The thing from my perspective Travis at the moment has started is to unpick their workplace Lord. dynamic. Trees. He now begins his work by like querying their approach. Yeah, well, I'm having problems conceptualising what you're trying to do. OK. Uh, I can't get it clear in my head. Well, if we can bend the tarp up just on the ends, <laughs> if it rains, then we're right. So we've got a tarp base and we've got the head of a, everyone's beds. And then we want to build a shelter on this side. There's a roof using these trees. So, so what's going to be over the top of you? The tarp. Right. And how's it going to stay up? Uh, what do we got on this right. end to keep the tarp up? That's the difficult one. So there's a couple of people who have the answer to your problem. Yep. They're very clear on it. Yeah. And you're not asking. Hey? And they're not contributing. But there are a couple of people in your group who know exactly how oh, to solve this problem. Yeah, that's what this, this guy's the rover. He's our number no. one leader. He's <laughs> leading, not speaking up. Oh, Mr. Dow, what's your problem? You need to, what, hold up a tarp? The roof, yeah. yeah. Well, you can use a combination of sticks and knots if you know what you're doing, but you need a stick. Yeah. <laughs> It's that simple, you need so a stick. Long. I think we need to find a more suitable place. I think it'll be it's pitch too... black out here. Pitch Have you black. found one so far? No, I haven't. I no. haven't. So if I was to go out and look for a more suitable place, you guys would move? But before you walk, what, what do you think it's better? Yeah. We're going to let it in the trees. Go so have a quick five-minute search. On the yeah. Just to make you feel at home and you're part of the sixth decision. <laughs> We're going to be crouching down. Crouching tiger, hidden dragon. <laughs> it's done. OK. Yeah, take, a bit, take away this part, maybe. Ben, yo. If we do it that way, this rug's going to have to be cut. Yeah, I know. The only thing that's stopping us from is we We're trying to think not to cut the rug. Yeah, I know. But it, it, if this is our only rug, we've got two rugs. Right. I think we really need to figure out exactly what we're doing before we start cutting our stuff up. <laughs> like, really, we don't even have a plan as to where all these tarps are going yet and you want to cut up rope. Yeah. Don't cut up rope yet. Oh, Let's figure out what tarp we're going to put on the ground first. Like, I think Dan <laughs> is in charge of building Dan's this tent. Why not? It's a team, mate. Yeah, you lead it. We help you. That's the team. Yeah. Any luck? Quick inspection, Dan. <laughs> Quick. Goldfish by name. Meantime, can you Goldfish by nature. And... Nearly an hour later, they're still going around in circles and getting nowhere. So where are we putting the tarp then? From tree to this tree? Yeah, we'll put the rope across. From branch we'll to branch. Okay, so we need to clear this Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll do the tarring of the rock. Just explain to me why you want to keep it nice. Uh, go from here to here because the tarps are literally that long to bend over and do a right. tent. So, so in your mind you've got... You've I don't got think the, they are the piece of rope and, yep. then you, and then you put the tarp over the rope like that. Is That's that right? it, yeah. Okay. Dan, you've been in scouts. 
right? Oh yeah, for a few years, yeah. And and you would have built hutchies before? Ah uh, yeah, yeah. A few so times. You know exactly how to build a hutchie, don't you? Yeah. So why aren't you? Because it's so much more fun to watch these guys try. Right. So is that helping? <laughs> or make oh yeah, out? mate. It's a well, they they got to learn, but um, uh, it's also look. I'm not gonna lie. It's been a while since I've done it myself. They will eventually. We'll get the hang of it. But uh, right now, there's too many egos going on. So. I tend to let that fizzle out and then when they figure out that what can be done can be done, that's when I'll step in and help. Okay. So we're almost at that point now? <laughs> we're getting there. Okay. We're getting there. Well, let me know when you get there, right? Sure. No worries. <laughs> Laura and I and the two Dans finally that's sort out the shelter. This is the unlock, lock, gas. Meanwhile, Boss Ben and Julian, the sidekick manager, are dealing with some secret men's business. Yeah, yeah we're just up there. It's got to be locked in, eh? Yeah. There we go. Got it? Beautiful. Yeah. All right. Although they brought everything but the kitchen sink, no they forgot the one thing that will make table. all the difference to their dining experience. I can't believe we forgot the cookie. Sorry? Look at it. Oh, shit. Bon appetit, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> That's for a giant. <laughs> so, it's been a pretty frantic afternoon. Would you agree? Yes. Yeah. There were four attempts to find the, the campsite. Is that the number of attempts that it will take to get agreement moving forward, do you think? Or? No, I don't think so. Probably not. No yeah, way. No. no. Some people weren't airing, airing thoughts, other people were. People wanted to take leadership and other people weren't, which should have. Well, Dan mentioned before, he found it hard to tell his bosses what to do. So that's, that's why we had to find that sort of ground as well. And Is that the way you felt, Dan? When people have a goal in mind, that's their way of their way of achieving it is, is law and that's it. And uh, sometimes they, there can be a better way or someone might have a better understanding of what can be done. Perhaps it's time to, to listen a little bit better. But in light, in light of that, I tend to find that the things that I was saying were falling on deaf ears. And uh, I'd really like to, to sort of take control and, and, um, and be a bit more assertive about things that, that could happen. All I need is an open ear and just have someone willing to, uh, to listen. Young Dan has just put his true feelings on the line. Here for you, buddy. Dr. <laughs> Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Will this mark the beginning of a great leap forward? Or will it turn into the mistake of his life? A new day dawns, and it's an opportunity for the team from Goldfish to break out of the us and them mold of management and embrace a new way of doing business. <laughs> but it seems they remain a camp divided. Morning. 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 <laughs> All right, Team Goldfish, it's time to get going. So get into it. We've got to take absolutely everything with us, correct? Correct. Ouch. Rubbish included. As they set out for the day, Travis remains deliberately vague about where they're going and why. The uncertainty is part of the challenge. All they do know for now is that they're meant to follow the leader. So one of the reasons why we put these people under this sort of pressure in such foreign environments is to break down their autonomous behaviour. You know, behaviour becomes automatic over time, especially in businesses. People fall into roles, people have expectations about how you're going to behave. And what we're doing is changing the whole game for this group of people. Goldfish are on a peninsula surrounded by a giant network of salt lakes. Over the next five days, they'll be forced to survive in and find a way out of this dangerous country. Subjected to extreme temperatures, their ordeal will be made worse by the intense glare and the disorientating mirages of this waterless landscape. You don't get a more inhospitable environment than what you're about to go into. So you came out here without a hat. Three days we've got out here without hats, without a problem. Three days with shorts on. Three days with short sleeves. 
Are you getting worried? Because I would be. Seriously worried. So I want you to think about that, because you've got an opportunity to put it right before we go. Now Travis has their attention, he'll give them some information that, if remembered, will be the key to their survival. So it's starting to get serious now. So serious that if you become disoriented or separated at all while we're out there, this will be our home base. So you should endeavour to get back here under those circumstances. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. And that's something to keep in the back of your mind as well. What we'll have here is water and there'll be a food supply and this will be a place of safety for you. All right? Where we're headed is, if you kind of look over your shoulder, we'll be heading off on a journey as far as you can see, basically. Ooh. Land sailing may just look like a fun pastime rather than an extreme survival test, but the intent is serious. How committed is the group to looking after all its members? After some quick tuition, the team from Goldfish are given a destination further along the edge of the lake to where their equipment has been transferred. It'll mean sailing nearly 15 kilometres out and around the headland. It's incredibly hot, uncomfortable, salty. Uh, you're getting spray off the wheels. It's actually quite damp out there. So there's a couple of people who have sort of locked onto the idea that any wind is good wind, so they'll just take off. Um, and that's an issue because we're leaving people behind. Um, in fact, people are everywhere at the moment and there's not a lot of hope of getting them back together in the short term. So Julian's right at the back, he's really struggled. And when push comes to shove and times get really tough, that's when you find out whether people are really considerate of other people or not. And that's just not playing out at the moment. As the hours roll past, Everyone is left to fend for themselves. A dangerous approach in a place this extreme. <laughs> Sometimes you're just looking out and all you can see is more salt yeah. and you've got no idea where you're going. In fading light and falling wind, a disparate goldfish struggle in to the pickup point. Oh. Huh? That was hard going. Yeah, just a wee bit, eh? Next, Travis loads the team into two four-wheel drives and heads deeper into desert country. This nighttime drive to the campsite is not a soft option. It's all part of Travis's plan to try and disorient the team so that when they wake up in the morning, they'll be well and truly lost. All right, guys, let's gather around over here. So this is where we're going to leave our cars tonight. Um, so what you're going to need to do is get all your gear out and then we'll head off to the campsite from here, OK? So the faster we can do that, the faster we can set up. Cool. So let's go for it. Guys, you've got everything out of this car. Should we just walk? Where to, mate? <laughs> I'd be following me if I was you. Yeah, good point. All right, let's go. Ah, oh, it's this one. Oh, for a while, mate. All right, so we're here. Travis now confronts the goldfish management over its reckless approach on the salt lake. Today was absolutely a team building exercise, and you absolutely fractured because you weren't even in voice contact with each other for most of the time. 
And it would have, to stay as a group, would have been incredibly frustrating because it would have meant giving up your individual experience of that activity. Yeah, well, your businesses are kind of like that. You're, you're a long way from each other sometimes. But nobody was left behind. I know I waited till Dan had seen two other people behind me until I could go forward. So yeah. there's no way, unless you had CCTV everywhere, yeah. you could have so, seen so, that. So Julian, why, why the justifications? Why the good news story? Because it happened. Right. So we're, <laughs> it's not a good news so, story. So I was out on the, the, the salt with you today. Yep. And you were right at the back. Yeah. You were at the back by a kilometre and a half. Yep. And you're telling me that no one got left behind. I don't understand that. I'm, I'm confused. They know that I can take care of myself and so, I'll walk so the I'll rest of it. it. I'll ask the question. <laughs> Julian, I'll yeah. ask you the question again. Were you not left behind being one and a half kilometres behind the group? Yes. Right. So please don't tell me that no one was left behind when you were clearly left behind. I can tell you people are not being honest with each other and they're not stepping up and saying what they need to say. I thought it, to me it was pretty like uh, very lonely out there when there was no wind and there was no one but yourself and you can see everyone else in the distance or you know either in front of you or behind you and you sort of wish they were there to help out. So you can do with that what you like but I'm giving you feedback as to what's occurring. And you can tell me a story about why that is or why it's not, or all the reasons why it should or shouldn't be, or you can take it on board, think about it, decide what you want to do with it. Because I guarantee that tomorrow is going to be exceptionally harder for you guys than what it was today. Halfway through their five-day outback odyssey, the cocktail bar city slickers find themselves a million miles from life as they know it. The bosses have decided to let the juniors lead them through the next three days. We've appointed Dan. I am your leader. Their 48-hour stock of food is dwindling. We haven't got much food left. <laughs> so we portioned out. Water has also become an issue. Uh, we took 20 litres with us, plus we filled up all the water bottles and uh, our 20 litres are gone. We filled up the water bottles. I filled up most of the water bottles this morning and that's uh, what we got in the water bottles is what we got left. Yeah. Until, uh, until, nice. well, until we can find some more, I guess. Well, some of us might die, but that's all right. We can always rehire. <laughs> the experiment in swapping leadership roles will be put to an early test. The game is about to change. So from here, I feel like we need to really up the ante, really put them under a little bit more pressure and start to break down those norms that they have in the workplace. So we're going to remove one of their key assets right at the moment, and the key asset is me. I'm not going to be with the group for the next 24 to 36 hours, and they're going to be left to fend for themselves. Travis believes that by disappearing and triggering a potential survival scenario, he can also trigger a radical shift in their behaviour. It doesn't take long for goldfish to realise their predicament. I don't think Travis yeah, is coming. No. no. Well, we need water. No one, then, no one's going to bring it to us, I don't think. No. And the points were pay attention, so pay attention where you walked last night. Yeah. Dan Jones, our team leader, and um, he's good at reading maps. Do we have a map? No. Same. <laughs> okay, terrain. <laughs> map, terrain. <laughs> With the survival instinct starting to kick in, goldfish decide they'll head back to the vehicles where the water is. They just need to remember which way that was. I made a point last night of remembering where we walked, even though it was a long walk, because I, I thought that this could come into it and Dan's got a good idea as well, so I think that we'll get back there. If we can get our bearings from here, it's definitely in that region there anyway. I want to make sure that instead of just basing the thing on that, I really want to be watching like footprints from where we came from last night, as opposed to just sort of intuition. I know, I know you guys were watching and everything, but yeah. Let's do it. Dan the barman has been elected leader, but after only 10 minutes, Boss Ben has decided to do things his way. Dan's walking right, you're walking left. 
Well, I remember where we are, mate. No. Look at the footprint. Right. See how your foot digs in? Like that? Oh, Ben. Come on. Fuck, in, mate. No, I'm just saying, mate. Look, Fuck. Ben, this Ben, Ben, wait. Damn. You gotta follow the leader, though. There could be like 20. He's the leader today. Okay. We're we'll yeah. going in this direction because it all meets up in the same place anyway. Yeah, but we've got to well, talk with the leader. The leader makes a final decision. So there's a really obvious pattern in behaviour that's starting to come out, and that is that Ben runs his business. And Ben runs his business by making decisions, and those decisions are right. When we walked in, I remember that being on the right. I remember it. So if my memory's wrong, then I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure that we're the only people around here as us and Travis, yeah. right? So. Look, we didn't. We either made these tracks last night, or someone else has made them today, and we've got to be meeting up with someone, right? Guys, so those footprints meet up where I'm going anyway. It's like we're walking around the bush. Can we? You've got to stop this every 20 meters. Yeah. We've got to go. Yeah, but those footprints meet up to where uh, I was going anyway, Dan. Who wants to go which way then? Well, they, it meets up on the other side of the bush. Same place. Are you, are you certain? 100%? Wait, wait till it goes over the title. Can you see where I was going? <laughs> so the situation they're in now, again, Ben is absolutely sure about where they are in the direction that they have to go. And I can assure you they have no idea where they are and absolutely no idea how to get out of it. Oh, I'm okay. just asking a genuine question. Have you got any idea of the direction we came? I've got a fair one, but you probably okay. have a better. Where, where's, where, which direction do you think we came from? I think we sort of walked in, but you said yourself that we did a no, bit of a loop. where do you think we, we came from? I reckon we came from around here somewhere. I don't think we came from around there because that's the edge of the Salt Lake. Right, where do you think we came and from? And remember, we walked down. Yeah, it was a downward gradient. Yeah. My, my, my intuition and memory tells me we came from that direction, generally yeah. speaking. So you reckon we came from... <laughs> not reckon. North let's not, north let's change this reckon yeah. and say, let's agree on. Yeah going which way. Let's go then. In fact, the cars and the water supply are just a 40 minute walk no, due walk west of the campsite. Yeah, so we're heading in the right yeah. direction. By following Boss Ben's right, lead, they're got heading got northeast and barrier. any dissenting views are quickly squashed. But when we get to that point, are we going what to another point? point? That section there, that ridge line, well, that We'll tree make line. a decision when we're over there. Yeah, then. Because this ain't the landscape. We, we, I will guarantee you this is not where we walk through. We didn't walk through this. Okay. okay. Yeah, let's get out. <laughs> well, to the trail, now we're heading northwest. So Ben, the hard-nosed attention to detail guru, seems to have discovered his softer, more spiritual side. I've got women's intuition. I'm still adamant we came from a northeasterly direction. I've got an inner compass that never fails, mate. We shaped that way and met that riverbed. And I can see a little track over there. That looks yeah. like a track, mate. Yeah. Oh, oh shit, buddy, while. shit. What is it? Massive <laughs> fucking ant. Is there any oh, more? Can you have a look? Don't go in there, you bastard. Oh, Did he? Did he? Oh, Punch it. Uh, uh, he's an angry man. Finally, after two and a half hours trudging in the heat, boss Dan Rice decides he's had enough of Ben's intuition. So how far this way do we walk until we say, well, hang on, we've walked too far? But instead of confronting his business partner, okay. he attacks Dan Obama. Because I can't, just be, I can't just be a cowboy and just do what I want. So why, why are you agreeing to keep walking because in the west? Agreeing, everyone else is saying that we should be heading northeast and we're too close to I've Salt Lake. I think we should be over that way a bit. Dan. I'm just doing it, mate. That's what I'm saying. Don't just do it, use your head. I'm using my Don't head. Don't walk I'm another team head, No one is agreeing with me, right? So I just, I'll, go, I'll go with the group. This is the forum. I've, I've put my opinion into the forum, mate, I did. Incredibly, it's Ben who's caused this increasingly dangerous situation who now takes the moral high ground. I've just got to right say that, that we what you two are doing there. now ain't helping anyone. You're arguing and you're arguing over stuff that no I wonder you and Dan I've, seems I've happy to relinquish what? his leadership right. back to the bosses. At Goldfish, there's not a lot of encouragement to swim against the tide. Dan, I have said it. I've said it a number of times. Okay, I've said, said that we're, I think that we're going, like, you know, north is the right direction, but I think that we should be heading a bit further in and away from the Salt Lake because we weren't this close to the Salt Lake when we drove in because we were close to train tracks when we drove in. I think that we should be heading northwest a bit, up in this way. Okay. 
Yeah, I, I, definitely. It was around here. I would really like the girls to say a word, yes or no. I have was, no idea what we are. Well, yeah. disagree so if you don't know. Well, agree I can't, I can't no. agree if I don't know. It's like putting fuel to the fire. Yeah, Why should you put... Up, yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not, not yeah, yeah, I'm not going to throw out a random opinion and say, well, let's go over yeah. that way. Yeah, I'm just... not. I'm just saying, if we all agree as a group, whether no. you, like Jill says, I don't know where we are. Yeah, so the, that's a decision. We just work on behalf of the girls. Us three don't have any point in the argument, any. Yeah. You three are the professionals. Well, let's walk that way for 150 metres, see if we can find a road. <coughs> and then we're all happy because we're headed in the right, in the direction that we all agreed upon. Like, well, we can't keep changing. We're not changing, I just want people to bring, put their heads through. Humans do this really interesting thing. When they don't have any knowledge and they're completely ignorant in relation to a matter, then they will make a decision about something quite often. And when they've made that decision, they tend to gather information that reinforces or strengthens that perspective. And then they'll ignore all the other bits of information that disprove it. So this is what's going on here, you know? And they're completely lost at the moment. Ben has decided we need to be heading northeast and then proceeds to gather a whole bunch of evidence which is completely rubbery that reinforces his perspective that he's right. Cool. Where's the point where your hunch might be wrong? Where you're gonna say, Guys, over there, because okay. if you walk any further, it's going to yeah. be out of the timeline that we walked last night. So, so that's well, this is how groups really get themselves into the, the ultimate jeopardy, which is, is death, you know, the blind leading the blind. It's mid afternoon. They've been wandering around the bush for nearly four hours. It's over 35 degrees in the shade, and they're running out of water fast. We're going to die, guys. We're going to die. The situation is turning dire. I've got one more sip of water. Thanks, man. That's it. Still a bit less. Last Still a bit there. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we got left. By now, even blind Freddy would have sensed, intuitively, that they were heading oh, in the right, wrong direction. Across, we didn't do the full loop. Finally, well, Ben seems to be prepared to listen. Done. If only to a fellow so boss. So we're parked here. Okay. So we just got to go back half an hour, and then we will probably come down here somewhere. Miraculously, he consents. Dan's thinking it's that way, which I agree with. But that means that we've got to traverse to find the road. But you know how people get lost and die out here because it's really disorienting this terrain and. You could seriously do circles very, very easily. Yep, say it. It's probably about 500 metres. <laughs> After six hours lost in the wilderness, they find the car and the water supply. Oh, water. Oh. Well done, Dan Rice. Oh. Oh. I seriously thought we were going to make it at one point. <laughs> a couple of points. Oh. <laughs> well done, boys. Six in the sun. Yeah. Six hours, broad daylight. Midday. It might not exactly be man versus wild, but the boys are wondering if they can maybe just drive back to civilization. Mm, flat battery. What did we leave on? Did we leave something on? Door open? Mm -hmm. The answer is no. No power. There's just no power at all. Travis has disabled the car. How do you know it's a flat battery? Like, it just, is it sometimes with the sparks? Is it well, rusty the around that area? Well, the How does it touch it? Mate, nothing. Oh, okay. no, okay. nothing. You can't it. lock it or unlock it, nothing works right, on cool. the car. Replenishing the water is a big relief, but they're still low on food, with no idea of where and when that problem will be solved. Why don't we share baked beans now? Have a few sultanas tonight? My opinion would be skip now, have a good dinner tonight, leave it at two meals a day. So why don't we have a few sultanas to get some Well, sugar. how about this? The people can eat their dinner portion later yeah, and separate later. it. Yeah, yeah look, the you don't else, don't have if you're having else now, I mean, they're, all, they're all single sachets, so... I'm having some beans. <laughs> this is my portion for dinner, I'm not going to eat dinner. So you did it without planning and agreeing. <laughs> no, but we can 
Me and Laura, our name, sure is going to join the party. You're going to eat a bit now? Yeah, yeah. there you go. We have taken our portions that we're going to have for dinner. That's a group decision still. Are you going to make me eat my portion now, later? We discussed, we've got small portions. We've got to last for two days, three days. We're going to, three of us are going to eat this can. Three of you eat yeah, the second can. Yeah, I'm just looking for the other can. I don't know there's only one can. You I thought I found two? another one No, this there's morning. only one can left. So is that the wise thing to do? So it's about planning what we have left. The brush with disaster has helped focus their minds. So, I mean, you know, we've, we've been running through every scenario, whether, whether we can fish. None of us have seen water, but we've, we've got fishing equipment. Um, whether we can hunt something, very difficult because this is just so remote that animals don't seem to even want to live out here. <laughs> seen Stranded very, very few lost. animals. The team needs to remember their instructions. The only strong, solid instruction that we've been given from them is to listen to each other and to facilitate each other's needs. Yeah, there's, some, there's something there. They're, they're not, you know, there's something there. And we have to realise that. If we keep shutting it down and go, oh, but he hasn't told us anything, then we're screwed. Interesting what is happening around the campfire at the moment. Laura is really starting to think much more laterally, much more broadly, and she's really honed in on a key message that I passed on to the group in, on day one, which was, you know, this is about working together, understanding each other, listening to each other, and using that as a mechanism to solve their problems. Finally, they remember the land sailing safe house. I think it would be better to follow the track that we came in on. What, you mean land yacht? If we retrace the, the road tracks up there, then we were driving sure for a I think I'd be able to get there if, um, if we had a car. We can follow the road, we can follow tracks, we can follow the cars, where that, they've been, but, and etc. But without a vehicle, do you know how long walk that'd be? That'd be a four, four, three day walk, mate. Team Goldfish wake up determined to get out of their increasingly desperate situation. I don't want to die, so now the onus is on us. It's, I have to do something, otherwise I am going to die. The group have decided they'll retrace their steps back to the land sailing shed and safety. Once again, Boss Ben calls upon his inner compass. This is basically our campsite here. This is where the car is. We remember coming in on the dirt road, which, which leads up that way um, and it's pretty thick dirt from memory. Three k's point to point there, point to point there, probably five k's because we stopped at that piece of light land mining equipment which is quite close to the main road. Main road from there to there would be I reckon anywhere between five to maybe eight k's. Well the road will be a lot less tricky than, than carrying water through the bush. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds oh, eerily familiar at the, at to the Dan most. Barman. Last night um, I threw in the suggestion that we should follow the track back to where we were. Um, ben said that was ridiculous. It's going to take us three days to, to walk back via the track. Um, but now this morning, his mind has changed and now we're following the track back. <laughs> so uh, we are following the road back to, uh, to where we were because it's our, it's our safety point. It's the way that we know actually goes to where we can be safe. So hook a bike crook, we're going that way but it's Ben's idea. Laura was nominated to lead them today, but suddenly there's a change of plan. I suggest we have Jaws as a team leader for today, purely, purely for the fact that it's not a learning exercise, but we need someone that's a mediator. Yeah. And that's, that's, I think that's a really key point because all of us that have ideas about what we want to do, we're dictating those ideas. So pretty much- Bosses take yeah, back no, control. Definitely. Have so never really given it away the next in the first place. Couple of nights. So one of the things that's just happening now is really interesting. Last night the, the team decided that Laura would be leading today. And what's happened now is that that leadership has been wrestled away from her. And there were an obscure group of justifications for that. Something about mediation and Julian's experience in management. All completely irrelevant in a lot of ways to the task today. She's well able to lead this group today, and there's absolutely no reason why she needed to have that taken away from her. So that's disappointing. Still lugging all their excess equipment, there we go, they begin the trek to safety. Let's go. Following the road back the way they came is a simple but good idea. Goldfish are no longer going around in circles, and they're finally getting somewhere, but remain a team divided.
right way. <laughs> Okay, so he's at the railway tracks. Here we go, Powering on. After five hours of exhausting but decisive walking, they appear to be nearing their destination. Not far to go now. We're almost at the safe house. They've found the land sailing hut. <sighs> oh, 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 man. God. Oh, baby. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done, everybody. Holy <laughs> shit, man. That was a long walk. <laughs> Directions were spot on. To the tea on now the that goldfish have found their way to safety, food and water, it's time for Dr. Travis Kemp to return. Oh, look who's here. Great to see you in one piece. Oh, thanks. It's good to be here in one piece. With the group buoyed by their success, but emotionally raw from their ordeal, it's the perfect time to take a long, hard look at themselves. <laughs> First up is Dan the Barman. Well, I was appointed the leader yesterday, and uh, that lasted about 10 minutes into the day before uh, control was wrested from my arms, I guess you could say. To be honest, I didn't really want to be the leader in the first place. So before you go on, Dan, I think that's rubbish. Mm, I'll be completely open and honest with you. Mm. Um, I think you would like it to be inconsequential to you, but you were showing an enormous amount of disrespect. And oh, I watched absolutely. it. And Boss Ben, with an interesting spin on why they all got lost yesterday. Apparently, it was all Dan the Barman's fault. I don't think Dan was up to the job of leading a team concisely. Um, so when we started to pull apart and have different ideas, he wasn't jumping on top of it. So then it was left to other members to take that role. So, so let me give you some feedback. Yeah. I'm sure that um, you have felt like you've listened. What I've seen over the last couple of days is a lot of non-listening. Yep. So how does that land for you? It's probably true. I mean, you know, uh, I've, I, I think I've listened to certain people and I haven't listened to others. Yeah, I'll yeah. tell you who you listen to. Yeah. You listen to Dan um, Rice. Yeah. And you listen to Jules. Yeah. And everybody else you ignore. Let me ask you another question. What's your relationship with um, Dan Jones like? Uh, there's no personal relationship there. Yeah, don't well, have respect for him. No, there's a lot. There's a lot of. There's, I 100% agree with you. There's a, from from my perspective, I don't know whether he means it or he realises he's doing it, but he's very condescending. So if he has lost his boss's respect, why does Dan stick around? When people that are as as motivated and and dedicated to a craft as Ben, Dan and Jules. When they're happy with me, then I'll know that I can, that I can step up and, and, and be like them. So you need their seal of approval? Before. I don't need their seal of well, approval, that's what you just per said. se. But, um, but, but Dan, that's what you're implying. You're implying that, in fact, your exact words were, when those guys say that I'm good enough, then I'll believe I'm good enough. True. So, so your competency, your passion, your capability, your drive, your motivation, that all has to be proven? Well, it has to be tested, it has to be, yeah. Okay. And, and so you're putting the validation of that in the hands of Ben and Dan, is that right? Well, yeah, I, I guess you could say that, yeah, I'm putting my validation into the hands of three of the best. You know, they're, they're, they're literally three award-winning people. Who disrespect you? Yes. <laughs> Travis is now determined that Ben be honest with Dan for the good of the company. So one of your opportunities in terms of developing your leadership is giving him that feedback. Yeah. Without the emotion, without the disdain, yeah. right? Because if you sit in that, you get pissed with him, right? Yeah. If I give it a go in as far as what you've told me to do and it still doesn't work, well, we'll have our answer. But um, yeah, no, absolutely, I'm more than happy to. So remember, it's got to be authentic for you. It's got to fit yeah. with you. It's got to be delivered in a way that's uh, accurate for you. I'll um, absolutely uh, um, approach that tonight. 100%. Or will he? Before they settle down for the last supper, Travis briefs Thank them on their final task. So to get yourself from here to safety and your ultimate rescue, what your journey looks like is a walk across the salt lake. What you need to be doing is heading due north. And when you hit land, you're not far away from what you'll find, which is a train track. When you hit that train track, what you're looking for is the first sign of civilization. That will be your key to your rescue. The scene is set for a free and frank clearing of the air around the campfire. 
a narrow window of opportunity to heal wounds, to grow and to learn. Dan um, the barman is I mean, up for it. There's a lot of people in this industry that just come and go, I'm not one of those people, I'm a, I'm a hospitality professional and, and I want to, to rise through these ranks. I want to, I want to be, you know, I want, I, want to, I want to own my own place one day. So to, to come through and have the training, you know, that uh, from supervisor to management to, you know, venue manager to venue owner, you know, that's, um, that's what I want to do. And uh, to know that, you know, this sort of training, this sort of, you know, thing is going to be available to me is um, it's very promising. Hmm. It looks like the window of opportunity just closed. To make it out alive, the goldfish team need to head due north to find a railway line back to civilization. But first, they must cross a massive salt lake in 38 degree heat. This is not to be trifled with. So that's not an easy walk. When you add it all up, it's about 18 kilometres. It's going to be hot in the sun. It's incredibly exposed. They can get disorientated quite easily. So after spending five days with goldfish, it's clear that they've got big challenges and they're going to really have to focus on these challenges when they get back to work. The first one is really starting to break down this barrier between the management, if you like, the leaders in the organisation, by a lot more listening in terms of the way they lead. Oh, it's going to be very difficult for other people to contribute. Go to the highest point. Yeah. After six gruelling hours, the team get across the lake and quickly find the train track. Oh. Is there any roads that are leading away from the train track at all? What do you mean? Well, well we've got roads that are going parallel to it, but is there any leading away from it? Is everyone right? We've just got here. Yeah. I'm just asking. <laughs> Whoa! Shit! Hey, hey! <laughs> As they head for civilization, you don't see every day. seems to be understanding that change camera. is needed. I am looking forward to going back to the workplace and getting into the projects that I started before I came out here, but maybe with a different view, try and, try and incorporate some of the things that have become apparent to me out here, see if it's beneficial. I saw a flag down there, so that must be like the end of a, the putting green. And Dan the Barman Jones has learned he needs to find a more subtle way of managing upwards. Yeah, it, it's it's tough not not being sort of listened to, but uh, I, my my approach now is to sort of wait until they've all cooled down from each other and then throw my opinion, and um, and sometimes that works. <laughs> but for Dan Rice, the experience has sharpened his belief in the survival of the fittest. The last few days have been tough, but going back to business, it's. It's another adventure, you know, it's another thing where we have to get to A to B. And if we can't get to B together, people come and go. That's the way we are. Awesome. Oh, goldfish! You're here, you made it! I made it. Congratulations! Yay! Oh, good to see you. Hello. Hello. You made it. It's great to see you. Well done, buddy. Well done. Well done, buddy. You well? Yes. Great job.
Dan Jones thinks fundamentally differently to the way Dan Rice and Ben and Julian think. Dan can really break up their what we would call groupthink, their tendency to agree with each other and side with each other, even in the face of really bad decision making. And their ability to be able to understand that Dan Jones is an asset and really start to connect with him and use him as an asset is going to be a key factor in the organisation's success moving forward. The Outback Adventure exposed simmering tensions at Goldfish. Back in the big smoke, how have these played out? And has the management embraced a future that includes listening to Dan the Barman? A few weeks after um, I received my letter of termination, <laughs> which is uh, conveniently on the same day that I was going to hand in my letter of resignation. So, um, yeah, so I'm no longer working at Goldfish. Some people make it and some people don't. And in this case, he just didn't make it. And what of the concept of diversity of opinion? I would hope people challenge me if they honestly think they know better or have be more experience in a certain area or we can benefit by that, I'd hope that that's the case. Look, uh, I've, I've worked with, with Ben for a while and, and I knew that he, I knew that his, his style of thinking was only going to be pushed by someone else. I was not going to be able to coerce them myself. Um, it's, sort of your, it's your typical Brady Bunch situation where, where um, it sounds better when Marsha says it. You know, so <laughs> as opposed to Jan, I guess I'm Jan Brady. Mm -hmm.